So it's really More been, it's, yeah. it's, it's your guest house now, but this front section is the reference room, but it has had a lot of history just in this individual home mm -hmm. on its own. Mm -hmm. And you have all of that information here as well. So if people that are interested in historic architecture and just in the history of house and, uh, and not only just Bloomfield, I mean, there's yeah, the all sorts of things is to find out. It's a federal style house and the walls are four ply thick and uh, Perfect. windows and doors are put together with pegs and okay. not nails and well, the rafters and floor joints and everything and yellow poplar floors, which aren't downstairs, not here anymore. Uh, they're covered up with another uh, layer, of, but the upstairs has the original flooring in it. The um, Kentucky became a state in 1792, yeah. right? But Bloomfield itself, not named Bloomfield at that time, uh, has a long history Middleburg. long before. It was called Middleburg at that time. Middleburg. And, and before uh, that it was Gandertown. Gandertown yeah. and Middleburg as well. The, the part across the creek was called Gandertown. Okay. The part over here was called Middleburg. And um, the only one of the main places of business was the mill. It was run by the Stone family, and he was a brother-in-law of uh, William Edwards, who who owned all the property on this side of the, on the other side of the road, and that was called Middleburg. Then his son was the first postmaster of Bloomfield. Of of uh, uh, his name was Hayden Edwards. He was the per first postmaster of Middleburg in 1810. Okay. I that's of know. interest as well, I think. Tell because me about it was Middleburg for about probably about twenty years. It was Middleburg. Okay. the uh, The Gander Town thing is fascinating to me. I, I'd love to know how because well, I, I know a, about well, I Gander. Don't, uh, Jane, you could tell them more about. Well, Jane could probably tell them more <laughs> tell than, us than about me. That. I could tell you about it, but I don't know if it would be true. But I, <laughs> well, I'm not sure how much is true. He's he's telling you that. Well, they I always tell me because I like to tell people that I'm a Gandertown gal. There you go. <laughs> she lived right in Gandertown. So. I live in Gander. I was born born Gandertown. Well, I um, have a, a writer friend, travel writer, and he says if the legend is more interesting than the truth, tell the legend. So all we'll right, go with all Gandertown. Right. We, can, we can tell you that. Well, the legend we really think is basically the truth. And our friends who are so active in the Humane Society would say no, no, but <laughs> history is history, and we're definitely not going to repeat it. I have a funny story about trying to <laughs> repeat it with a rubber chicken, and that did not work, so I was awarded the rubber chicken as my prize for a whole year. However, the, back in history, people didn't have a lot of sporting activity right so while the men would bend their elbow quite a bit yes. they would use their fastest horses to ride up and down the creek that uh, we have a picture of right here in this book and when they did that there was a pole suspended with a live gander the pole had the suspension with a live gander in the middle. Okay. And as they rode as fast as they could, the first person who was successful in wringing that gander's neck won the kitty. Okay. Uh, that would not go over today. No, but that, that may be a nice, nice story. But back then. And uh, I don't think that there's really untruth in, in that happening here because we can research. Uh, gander pools that have taken place throughout history. And so really when they would refer to a specific area that's probably how it ended up being called Gander Town. Correct. We'll Correct. go on down to Gander Town. Even as early as the mid-1900s at our little grocery store here in the middle of Bloomfield. Right. Uh, one of the clerks was known to say to the delivery boys, here take this over over yonder on that uh, Gander's town, and those folks need their groceries. Tell but, us how it ended up being called Bloomfield. Oh, well, I, I, I have to have documentation in front of me to really tell you all of that, because I think Dr. Bob has touched on these names of Dr. Mary Hill and Dr. Bemis, uh, who had a family member named Miss Bloomer, yes. who moved here from up east, that married 
the doc, the Merrifield man. And so Bloomfield. And they took the names from those because I believe that Dr. Merrifield, or was it Dr. Bemis, who first Dr. Bought Bemis married Elizabeth line. Bloomer, <laughs> and then uh, their daughter. Uh, okay. Was Francis Merrifield married? Francis Dr. was Merrifield. the founder of the Methodist Church. Yeah, that's Dr. Merrifield's wife. And that's oh. Dr. Bemis's daughter. But Dr. Bemis's wife was a bloomer. Okay. So they took the name of Merrifield and the name of, of Bloomer and made Bloomfield out of that name. That's what I always heard, and I presume that has to do with their names. That's what the, it's always written in the books about who was named oh, that, these. and that's the reason. But maybe not that reason at all. But I've always heard that. that well, that's what we've always been told. And when you mention that book, we do need to say that Dr. Robert Moore has compiled many, many of the Merrifield family's writings yeah. into one book, okay. The History of Northeast Nelson, and that allows us to understand what these folks have been telling us. And, and prove, make this, uh, the accuracy right. to Frances write. Frances Merrifield, they called, her, they called her Fanny Merrifield when she got older, and she gave the the land across the street for the Bloomfield Methodist Church and this land for the Parsonage was across the street from it as well. Okay. And I think they gave the land for the original Methodist Church also, but I'm not sure about that. That's down where the water company used to be. The younger people have been a, a great, it's a great thing, like, uh, like Danny Case and uh, Bloomfield Facebook and Mary Lee Muir Bloomfield Facebook and all the pictures they have. They have more pictures that are such great interest to everyone. That's what I think the big interest is now in that. We talk, we've been talking about old history, but this is more recent history, two or three generations ago, and everybody's looking at all the old pictures they put on. Yeah. And talking about that, that's what the main interest in is now as far as history goes. It's mostly local history two or three generations ago. It's so, so interesting to everyone. And thank you all for, for doing that. We enjoy it so it's, much. It's my and pleasure. And Danny, everyone thinks it's so special. You know. Well, and, it is and special. hitting on that, I'd love to know, you know, what, what made you decide that you would want to become part of this and be like the next leadership with it? To, it happened because I had lost my mother and father and I somehow became the picture keeper of our family pictures and many were not I'd eat. I didn't know who anybody was, <laughs> and it was, it, it, I was determined to find out who these people were. And then Natalie, my sister, told me about Danny's uh, Historical Bloomfield Facebook page. Right. I said, I don't want a thing to do with Facebook, I don't want on it. <laughs> and one day she had her laptop open, and I started to see what she was looking at, and I was drawn in, and I've not left it yet, and I just became obsessed with all the old pictures and trying to get everybody identified and know where these places are before they go on. Right. Our genera that generation's leaving us That's and right. I've already found that it's it's hard to even get some of them identified. Exactly. There's many left that aren't identified and I'm not sure we will ever get them identified. Well, I think the... Oh, don't the, give up. <laughs> well, and the fact that even a small town, you know, small little quaint community like Bloomfield is stepping into that next level, which is the Facebook social media stuff, and you're finding it to, to be a wealth of information. It is. And a way to spread the word. It's a, it's a book to me. When you, go, when you get on that page, it's an open book because with each picture, become a story is under the picture. There you go. That tells you about that business that what once was there in eight in the eighteen hundreds or what who the family is. Right. It's just uh, a constant book to okay. read every day. Something new comes on every day. That's great. So you all do keep it up and and well rock on, y'all <laughs> one thing feels are really rocking. <laughs> the biggest thing or the most important thing is that we love history. We have not changed in one way, and that is our friendliness and our desire to keep on keeping on. 